Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I don't want to give you too many baking videos. Still can't work here in Scotland. No definitive dates yet. So I thought I would talk to you about some new products I've been trying. Um, I don't want this to be too ranty, but there are a few things that have been winding me up. Tiny, tiny little wind up. I don't get very shouty and I don't get very preachy, but I love that phrase, teach don't preach. So there are a couple of things that I'll talk to you about that get on my nerves <laughs> with some of these things. Not the brands, just, um, you know, sometimes it's a point of view and it's like it's my way or the highway. And I'm like, oh, no, there's more than one way. So um, it's a couple of products that I've been using that I really like. It's some products, again, um, going into a new decade, being in my 40s now, nothing's dramatically changed. Skin hasn't dramatically changed. Um, but I have started trying out a few new products because... I'm fortunate in the sense that I have oily skin. I don't have problematic skin, but it's definitely oily. So I'm going to get my wrinkles at a slower pace than someone that's got a drier skin. But you don't, very few people get away scot-free. What you might gain with your skin type, you run into difficulties because of that skin type in other areas. So there's um, issues with oiliness where you might have congestion and you might have breakouts but then you might not get your wrinkles until later. Doesn't mean you don't get wrinkles, you just might not get the dryness and the obvious wrinkles till later. But then someone with dry skin might have a lovely, beautiful, clear skin, but they might get redness, irritation, flakiness, and then obviously your accelerated wrinkles. Genetics play a part, how you look after yourself play a part. That's probably where my rantiness might come in today. But what I thought I would start with is these Dermalogica products here. So ignore these for the moment. So I love watching Caroline Hyren's um, live videos. I find them so entertaining. And a few weeks ago, she had someone from Dermalogica on. And I'm very familiar with Dermalogica, maybe not as much as I was when I was teaching in the colleges. But we had to use Dermalogica products quite a lot of the time. So we were trained in them. So it was a point where I could tell you the ingredients list and I could name you your specific cleanser, your specific mask at the drop of a hat because it was ingrained in you. But obviously when you're out of the habit of working with it. But the Dermal Institute used to come in every year and train up the students and we were always there too. So you were getting a freshen up every year with your Dermalogica. So a bit out of the game with Dermalogica and then they actually... On the video, they launched the new retinol clearing oil. So I do use glycolics and dip to toe into retinol, but not massively, I'll have to be honest with you. Some people have their routines and they are obsessive. It's got to be this in the morning, it's got to be that in the afternoon, it's got to be layer, 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 layer. That's probably where my rantiness comes in. You are either in the cocktailing slash massive menu for your skin if you like every day or you're a simple straightforward what's the issue what's the solution that's the product I definitely think through having very sensitive skin that's also oily and in my teens like a lot of you I'm sure tried every product under the sun if I had blemishes and breakouts and I never found anything that truly worked because also what you've got to remember rant coming it's not just what you put on the outside. We also know it's what's going on inside. And the one thing that is impossible to, to basically put across to people, you know when someone asks a question on a video, what can I use for this? What can I use for that? Well, there are solutions and there are products that will work amazingly for one person, not work for another. It doesn't mean the product was rubbish. I think sometimes people forget that there are variables. So the variables in each individual are unique to you. So when someone makes a blanket statement, this product's rubbish, or they make a blanket statement, don't buy this, it's rubbish. It's so irritating to me because it's more complicated than that. Maybe everything about that product was right for you, but there's one little variable that you need to correct or that's never going to be corrected in you and that's why it won't be perfect for you. Not talking about these specifically, but sometimes it's a bit like science. Do you ever remember in science, they would say, we're going to do this experiment and we're going in with the, um, now I've forgotten the terminology, forgive me. In science, I'm stripping it down to basics. 
you would be doing an experiment and it would say, this is the test that we're going to do and we think this is the result. And then sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And if it did work, they would say that is because of X, Y and Z. And if your experiment didn't work, they would say, ah, there was a variable, the variable changed. So sometimes with the best well in the world, everything about that product and your needs for the product should be right for you. But something was just off within the variables. And again, it could be your physiology. It could be how you're feeling. There could be something a bit off within you. It could be your diet. It could be your hormones. You could end up getting that corrected and then the product works fantastic. Or it could just be that for no reason in particular, just didn't work for you. Ranty bit over. So I thought I'd try this. And do you know what? I really like it. Not cheap. I think it's around about £60. Um, when Caroline was doing the video, they actually had a discount code. So I think that brought it down to 50 something. So I've been using it for about two weeks now. And what I've found is that um, it's really effective. So what I am doing at the moment, this is why I've got these other products out now. My issue was definitely not wanting to irritate my skin as I get older, trying to deal with some of the oiliness that gets on your nerves during the day, but you can't avoid it. You know, when you've just got oily skin and you're like, oh, I need to deal with this, but not wanting to dry it out. You don't want to go the opposite way. But also, you know, you get your hormonal breakouts and you're like, oh, what now? What's that? So the retinol, again, I'm keeping this super simple, but from my point of view, um, the easiest way that it was explained to me was that glycolic works from the outside in, retinol works from the inside out. So the retinol clearing gel, you put about six drops on every night. I do the neck and the face. And then what happens is it absorbs very, very quickly. And it's got a very, how can I put it? It smells chemically, but not off-putting. Obviously, it's a very active product. I can smell the tiniest hint of coconut oil. But apart from that, I would say it smells like a science product, it smells like a chemist product. And I don't mean that in a negative way, you just can tell that it's potent. But then I feel you get the tiniest little hit of coconut. But I've been using it for about two weeks now. Now clear skin overnight, obviously um, they don't mean in one night. But what I've found is that I'm not getting irritations like I did. I still wake up in the morning and I think your skin is your skin. If it's oily, it's oily. So that's definitely what I find. But I can honestly say two weeks in, I am seeing differences with this. Anything that was a bit red and irritated isn't really there anymore. It's not obviously just, oh, it's vanished. But this isn't put it this way. I feel as if this is doing something. I feel as if it's calming anything down that's a bit irritated. And I feel as if it's having a result. So I would say this is definitely worth the investment if you're looking for something Again, target market, breakouts and skin ageing. So I'm not going to go in depth. I would say have a little look at Caroline or even Dermalogica if you want to really go in depth. But just for me, I think that could be quite a good investment if that's the two things that you're looking to target and you don't want to buy product after product after product. Now, the next part of this, um, years ago when I was working in the college, you could order your Demologica at work. But I also had a company that I ordered it from because they were excellent at just quick customer service. One of those salons, even though it was down in England and I'm up here in Scotland, they were just on it. And they would um, do, I think Demologica does it with everyone, but they would do a questionnaire with you and ask you about your skin type. And then one of the lovely things about that brand is, and again, also, I think they were called The Courtyard, but I don't think, I don't know if they're there anymore. They would send you samples to try based on what your needs were, which I always loved. So the samples, because it was the actual Dermalogica UK website uh, and first time order, they sent you a batch of, well, you could pick. So I picked the Vulti, Vulti, <laughs> multivitamin power recovery mask because I remember using this and it's such an easy to use gentle effective mask and what I like about this is you've got four individual sachets so that will see you through so I like it because again with Dermalogica because it's a salon brand and it's not highly perfumed and it's not full of irritants that's why we used to use it on all the clients because your clients were anyone from the students that were working on each other your youngest is your school groups so you're talking about 14 upwards and then your oldest, um, older ladies, not so much older gentlemen, but older people would come in 
easily in their late 70s could be the eldest. I don't think we had anyone in their 80s. But they were looking for their treatments too and it was a subsidised treatment. They were getting a nice cheap treatment because it's the students that are training. Um, but they want the nice products, they want the full effects. So this is an um, ultra replenishing mask to help rescue stressed ageing skin. But I would say even though it's targeted at ageing skin, it's still a lovely mask. If you want to try it, go ahead. And then this, I think, now this was a free gift for your first order. And it's little minis. I think the value they said was about 30 something pounds. A special cleansing gel, a skin smoothing cream, a stress positive eye lift and a daily microfoliant. I've not tried the stress positive eye lift, but everything else. The only thing that didn't really agree with me, daily microfoliant. What I would do, which a lot of people do, is they, it's basically um, a rice enzyme if I remember rightly. Let's have a look certainly was how we used to phrase it in those days. Gentle powder microfoliates dulling debris for smoother, brighter skin. The problem with the microfoliant for me was, even though I don't have dry skin, when I used it, as soon as I washed it off my face and patted it dry, it felt dry as a bone, as in it felt tight and I couldn't get moisturiser on quick enough, so it felt just too, too drying for me. But you can add it into your cleanser and do it that way. So you could exfoliate with the other product. But that's probably the one that I'm not mad for. But again, you've got to be honest. It's very unusual to have a, a range or a brand and every single product is perfect for you and everything does what you want it to do. Sometimes, again, we're back to variables. Sometimes what something does and what you want it to do don't quite gel. So you can adapt it or you can move on and find something else. Doesn't mean that it's not a good product, just means that it's not for you. Which also reminds me of frownies. Someone online was saying that frownies, you know, the little wrinkle patches, and they were saying, don't buy them, they're rubbish. Well, they're certainly not Botox and they're not going to remove a wrinkle, but I happen to think they're amazing, as I've said before in previous videos. If you sleep at night and you don't realise that you're crushing your face, and you're maybe giving yourself a wrinkle, like the little 11s in the middle of your eyebrows. I know for me, there's sometimes when I wake up in the morning and it's almost as if I've um, squished my face and I've gave myself a little line in the middle of my eyebrows. So if I put a frowny on before sleep, that stops that happening. So when you wake up in the morning, you whip off the frowny, you have not given yourself a big wrinkle in the middle of your eyebrows. So no, it's not Botox. No, it's not going to remove the wrinkles, but... I think it's a bit mean and a bit constrictive to just say they're rubbish, don't buy them. Because for me, they definitely have a place. And for me, it is, you know, putting them on before sleep. And it just means that if you squish up your face, then you're not going to wake up in the morning. And the first thing you see when you look in the mirror is basically, oh, what have I done here? Got a wrinkle here. I've squished my mouth. I've squished my eyes. So it, for me, that's what I find it really handy for. But again, we're all different, whatever suits you. If you like it, buy it. If you don't, move on. But this, well, these are three products that I'm using at the moment. The Dermalogica, which I've still got here. This is definitely the, the product that I'm focusing all of my attention on. And let me actually show you. Show you how it looks. Um, you don't get a lot for your money, but you don't need a lot. So when you open it, this is your little dropper here and then what you do is six little drops and that goes onto your hand and you know I talk about dry oils that oil is gone in next to no time so that's what you use so this is my main focus I'm giving this center stage this retinol clearing oil and in the mornings so I'm not using the retinol tonic at the moment because I'm using the retinol oil as well. I don't believe, for me, again, everyone's different. As you know, I like Alison Young too. She's the QVC beauty expert who inspired me to go into the business when I was about 13 or 14. I think I'm more in line with Alison, but maybe that's because we trained similarly. We trained in aromatherapy, we trained in complementary therapies, we trained in facials. So we're not facialists in the sense that that's all we trained in. So. You wouldn't call us specialists in one area. We're trained in lots of areas. But when you do an HND, you have to get to a certain level within that area of expertise. So you do know your area and you do know the treatment and you know the treatment process. 
But sometimes I think when you also do complementary therapies, it opens up your eyes to the other side of things. You understand about the actives, but you also understand about the products and the ingredients that are more gentle. Some people are so against natural products. And by natural, what I mean is we used to call them biological ingredients, like using yogurt, using avocado. Here comes a rant. Sometimes people say, what a load of rubbish. If you want results, you must use chemical ingredients. You must use something that's been formulated in a lab. You must use this. Oh, I 100% agree. If you're looking for something that is targeted and, you know, it's really designed to get to the core of a problem. But I also believe that sometimes when you've got an irritation, something that's natural can do the trick over and above any product that somebody's created. For instance, Manuka honey. Sometimes people will say, why would I want to put honey on my skin? Other people will say, had a problem, used honey, sorted it. And then you get a product that's full of ingredients and Manuka honeys in the mix. But then you may also have a situation where all you needed was the raw honey. Sometimes all you need is yogurt. Sometimes all you need is oil. So I definitely think I'm more relaxed about it all and I don't really prescribe to, oh no, it must be this, oh no, it must be that. I think I sit in the middle. I think like most things, I see both sides and I try to understand both sides. And that's why I'm getting a bit irritated because in today's world, for so many reasons, people can't see both sides. It's my side, it's the right side. And if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. So that's where I feel with this. I don't want to overload my skin. I will pick a product. I won't um, continue to load product after product after product on because I feel then that you can actually start to irritate your skin and give yourself different issues. But if I wasn't using the Dermalogica, then at night I would use the retinol tonic. Um, glycolic at the moment, my favourite thing for glycolic is, um, you know, sometimes on your arms, I don't have it so much now, but sometimes when you get um, the chicken bumps, the skin, I've forgotten the technical name for it because I'm too busy ranting, but it's basically dry skin and it gives you the little bumps and sometimes they're red and sometimes it just looks a bit like a plucked chicken. So glycolic can be excellent just for sweeping over any areas of your body on a little bit of cotton wool or something now again, we're finding that we can get these alternatives too, that you can use them again and again. So if we can move away from cotton wool, which I know I need to start doing, then I'll have to start looking for an alternative so that I'm not constantly buying cotton wool pads. I'm definitely going to look at that soon. But something like a cotton wool pad, your glycolic, sweep it over the skin. Some people get the bumps on their legs because of shaving, because of waxing. Obviously, you don't do it freshly after it because you could irritate the skin, but some glycolic swept over that area because it's working from the outside in. That could be all it takes to smooth that area. It could also mean that you don't have to buy products that cost an absolute fortune or you don't need to hunt for products. You could find that a glycolic in the NK list is under £10, so is the ordinary. You could find that something like this is all you needed and just sweep it over Maybe not every day, but if your skin can take it, that's fine. Maybe every other day, maybe a few times a week. And eventually, not too long, a week or two, that should start to improve and you should start to see a noticeable difference. Again, I'm not saying that you'll completely remove everything, but you could definitely see a noticeable improvement. So that's something to think about as well. And then the other product that I was using twice a day, but now because of the Dermalogica, I switched it to the morning, is the Vichy vital solution and that's the normaderm um i tried it because i saw them talking about it on tv and they were saying it was great for oilier skins it's actually quite sticky when you put it on so it does absorb quite quickly let you see there's nothing wrong with it but um it's quite a quick absorbing moisturizer but then what i find is once i've applied it my hands feel quite sticky so i need to go and wash them um it's not my absolute favourite. It hasn't done anything wrong. I just think sometimes you know yourself that you're enjoying a product, but you might not buy it again. And I think that's one of those. I might try other products within the range. I'm also using the facial wash and that's absolutely fine too. 
just think, um, again, we're back to variables. It was discussed on TV as a really effective range for oilier skins. And I've got no doubt that it is, it's definitely helping oil. I just think sometimes, again, what you're looking for and what the product can give you don't actually match and then you'll try something else. So I always seem to go back to Aven. I seem to like that. And, but I do think it's really important that you keep trying other products. So I'm using that in the morning at the moment. And obviously I'm still using my eye cream. I, st I tend to stick to Nivea because I irritate quite easily with eye cream. But there, I think that's my ranting this over for the day. Um, the only other thing, I've got some chocolate that I want to show you because I've noticed at the moment it is basically beauty and chocolate and these are my two favourite things. The only other thing that made me rant that I've just remembered is um, I read an article about in today's world, your facials, if they're too gentle and they don't hurt, then um, you're not getting a good service and they're not effective anymore and that really wound me up. Because again, everybody's different. Um, there are facials where they're going to be using certain products and certain machinery that will be targeted. And it's not so much hurting, it's more the fact that they will be designed to maybe um, tighten and tone muscles or maybe they're designed to have an effect on your collagen or stimulate something within the skin to get a result. But again, um, I just think it's quite clo cloistered, quite... It's. I don't think it's very beneficial to say to people if your facial doesn't hurt or you, your skin's not red after it or you've not been extracted so there's nothing left then you've not had a good service because that's not what everyone's looking for. You, when you get new clients or even when you've got regulars, everybody's looking for something unique to them. So maybe it's just me, I don't know. If someone says that they want something extremely gentle and extremely, I'll use the word basic. I don't think basic's a bad thing. Sometimes people want a basic facial. It doesn't mean that they want a rubbish facial. It doesn't mean they want a substandard facial. It just means they want to strip it back to basics. And what are the basics? They're the key building blocks that you build from and you work from there. So please don't think if someone says that they're doing a basic facial that it's somehow not as good as someone in the big smoke that's spending three hours on a £500 facial for you using 17 bits of equipment and using all these different coloured lights on you. That's fantastic. But someone that maybe works in a village who knows their clientele, knows what they want, knows what they're after, and they can do a really, really good basic facial that's simple, effective, doesn't hurt you, but does everything that you asked of them and they do it well, please don't discredit that. Sometimes the more expensive and the more fancy doesn't mean that it's the best. Sometimes it's what you want and what you're looking for at that moment in time. That's why I think I'm a bit ranty at the moment because sometimes it's like, this is the way it is. I am telling you how it is. I know, I'm the boss. No, we're all different. Chill, <laughs> please chill. So rant over, let's finish with chocolate. I had to show you these. Because we're baking so much now and because I love cakes and I love chocolate. Look, white Twixies, these are delicious. It's literally Twix with white chocolate. I can't stop eating them, but I am limiting myself to one at a time, but they are so good. These are the single ones, but I know you get the double ones too, but oh, they are good. The second thing, I have my cousin to blame for this. I've not seen her for ages. She lives down in England now, but I've not been to France and I would love to go. And about 10 years ago, she'd been to the south of France and we went to visit and she said, um, we're just, no, so she'd been and she said, um, would you like to try these Souchard little truffles? And I didn't know what she was talking about. And I was like, sure, let me try one. It's chocolate, I'm not gonna turn it down. And I tried one and oh my God, oh, that was it, hooked. So these are the darker ones, but you also get the milk chocolate ones and I've just finished them. You get other flavors too. I think there was a cherry one. So they are basically little pralines, but they're so good. And I, I think you only get them in France, but I found, the, I found them online and I just had to get them. So they're like a praline. I wouldn't even say like a truffle because they're not soft. But again, it's not rock solid. I, just, I can't explain it. They're just amazing. So the, you just need one. They're so indulgent that one's plenty. But so she'd been to South of France and she said, try one. 
tried one, got hooked. She gave me a pack that then became probably the bane of her life because every time they were going to the south of France, I would say, oh, is there any chance that you could get in? So they would come back with double packs. But then when they moved down to England, obviously that all stopped. So then they became, you know, when you've got something that you used to love and you, <laughs> you pine after it and you're like, oh, you still love them. They're from the past now, I can't get them anymore. And you couldn't get them online. Or sometimes we'd see them pop up on Amazon and they would be so ridiculously priced like £25 for a box or something. I oh, can't do that. So I found them, the website's called French Click and quite reasonably priced. Had to get them as a treat. Had to, because I haven't had them for years. And oh, wow, they're just so good. So if I can, if you're a chocoholic and I can enlighten you to something that you've not tried before, then these Souchard, I mean, I call them chocolates. They're just, they're special. <laughs> <laughs> special. If anyone's going to France, get them. And if you don't want them for yourself, get them for someone that you know loves praline, loves good quality chocolate. I just, honestly, sometimes I think I should have trained as a chocolatier. I think that would have been the dream job. I sometimes wonder if um, I'm going to turn around in five or ten years time and say, Right guys, that's been fun. I am now going to open my baker's or my cake shop or my chocolate shop and uh, that's all I'm going to do from now on is I'm just going to make chocolates and cakes. So don't be surprised if that happens one day, but hopefully if it does, um, you won't be surprised because this channel, <laughs> because of lockdown, we're steadily becoming more and more baking inspired. Having said that though, I am doing you some more savoury too. And when lockdown is eased, hopefully more treatments. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you understood my point of view. I don't ever want to be that person that is negative and uh, calling people out because I actually think our industry is amazing and I love different points of view and I learn from so many people's points of view. Take it all on board. There's not a day when I don't think, right, that's something I hadn't considered, or that's something I didn't even know, or that's a great point. But I do get a bit irritated when people discredit something, especially complementary therapies, especially the gentler approach. Please don't discredit it. It's not all about the most advanced this and the most expensive that. Don't discredit sometimes just stripping it back to the most basics. And sometimes the old wives' tales are still used because a lot of the products and a lot of the times, I'm saying products, a lot of the times it's things out your kitchen cupboard. A lot of the times that the old wife's tales are still used is because it still works. And remember I told you about the time that I cut my finger on holiday and it was irritated. And because we were travelling, all my aunt could suggest was a sugar and salt poultice, which was a little bit of sugar and salt on my plaster. And then I put my plaster on and that's all that was on it. We were literally in the hotel getting ready to go to a wedding. Got on the plane and when I came off the plane, my plaster with my sugar and salt, everything had been completely taken down from that infection in that cut finger. I mean, what can you say? If we hadn't have been travelling, I would have been at the chemist, I would have got products, still legitimate, still effective, but we couldn't get anywhere. We were on a plane and that sugar and salt poultice did the trick. So my point is, let's not discredit anything. Let's just remember that a lot of the time they all complement each other and they don't have to be one against the other. But that's me. I'm finished moaning. I'm finished whinging. I hope you enjoyed that. And I am off to eat my chocolate. So have a lovely day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again soon.